We love spending hours and hours on our images, our two longest integration times being 61 hours on the Seagull Nebula and 81 hours on the Christmas tree. My favorite. We've always been tempted to join a group of astrophotographers and do like a collaboration with other people so that we can go even deeper on an object than we've ever gone before and maybe even reveal things that were previously never seen. So we were invited by Tim Schaefer to team up with 15 others on M51. Uh, Tim explained to me that they had just finished imaging M81 and M82 and the image is incredible. What they produced was just fantastic and I also loved the nice write-up about it. Tim said that Bortle 2 skies, where our main telescope is hosted, would be great to help for the data that they wanted to gather on their next project, so of course we were thrilled to join the team. So in this video, we'll tell you how this whole collaboration uh, worked and show you the incredible image that resulted in 255 hours of total integration time, along with all the interesting um, faint things we were able to reveal. And if you're interested in joining this group for future projects, we'll talk about how you can join at the end of this video. All right, let's go. So Dalia, why would a group pick M51 as a target for this massive project? Good question. So M51 is known also as the Whirlpool Galaxy, and it's one of the most popular targets for beginner and advanced astrophotographers. And it all started with Isaac Roberts on April 29th, 1889. It is located 23 million light years away in the constellation Canes Venatici, and has a size of 80,000 light year in diameter. Mm. And the Whirlpool Galaxy also has some of the most distinctive spiral arms, and they were first discovered by William Parson in 1845, who made that famous drawing of the object in that same year. So M51 was also the first object where spiral arms were detected, which makes it even more exciting. History was made. And so one more unique attribute to this galaxy is the tidal stream, which shows even in beginner images and at low integration times. No one really knows the full extent of this tidal stream, which is one of the reasons why this group picked this target for the project. And this was a great pick because we were indeed able to reveal even the faintest part of the stream, as you will see later. If you don't know, uh, the tidal streams are visible because of the tidal interaction between the big M51A galaxy and the smaller M51B, which is getting absorbed by the big one. Because yes, M51 is actually two galaxies and not just one. Very exciting stuff. So uh, M51 also has been studied a lot over the years. It is a prime example as to what happens when two galaxies collide, which is so crazy. The thing is, a faint large ionized gas cloud was discovered in 2018, not too long ago, just north of both of the galaxies. And we hope to do our best to enhance that section as much as possible as well. So the full extent of the tidal stream, uh, the faint ionized gas cloud, and the overall full details within and around M51 would be our main goals for this project. So M51, here we come. The hub for the whole project was held on Discord, so it had different channels to keep everyone like organized. Everyone is able to talk about the project um, and list their equipment and see progress all at any time. And so midway through the project, uh, we all voted on a cool name for the team, which ended up being the Deep Sky Collective. Ah! <laughs> uh, Discord worked really well to keep up to date with the project, so we'll keep using that in the future, probably. Love it. So we spent 25 hours on M51 from Udro in RGBH. 23 hours and 20 minutes could be used for this project. So how does everyone send their data in an easy manner in a, such a group like this. So I added the data to a shared NAS. So by clicking on the link, I was able to see folders dedicated to each member of the project. All I had to do was upload the registered files to the right folder under my name, and that was it. So it's very simple. It can get very messy very easily sometimes. Yeah, with 15 members, imagine like 100 members. So you all, you all have your own folder, which is great. It's like less time spent, but more chaos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
So because of all the different members and the fact that not everybody is blessed with clear skies most of the year, it took a while to gather everybody's data together to finally stack it. So we joined the project in early May and the data was all acquired around uh, mid-July. Like that was when it was done. So if you plan to join a similar group, just expect that it's going to take some time for each project and these things just can't be rushed. Each time uh, someone added their data to the shared folder, they would notify the Discord chat with the integration time, filter used, and size. In the end, we ended up with 255 hours of usable data, which is huge and probably the longest ever uh, integration time for M51. Which is... Crazy. Seems record-breaking, feels like a I surprise, so, yeah. I don't know. So here on the left side, you can see what the complete stacks look like for each channel. So in total, 255 hours, um, so R, G, B, H, A, and L. And on the right side is what my data looks like, as an example, just for the R channel. So at first glance, you can see it looks very similar, so if you compare the R and R. But um, overall, I think there is much less noise in total with the full stack. So in the future, I'm probably going to try to process the data uh, from my scope by itself and then the one from everyone's data just to compare the difference but yeah so here you can see r h a g l and b from all the scopes combined and this is what the sweet data looks like before it is combined into one color image very exciting wow look at this very very nice very promising for sure all right. So to avoid any chaos, only one person was trusted for all stacking related tasks, and that was Carl. And one person was uh, in charge of processing all of the data, and that was William. Thanks. Both did an amazing job taking care of this massive job and stacking and processing 255 hours of data. Yeah. That's a lot. A lot. And I know for sure it must have been a, a very tough job because of all the different focal length and all the different bottle zones, you know, gradients and all that. So math, math, math. Crazy job, yes. Can't. So, should we show the final image now? I think it's time. So let's do it. The final result is mind blowing. Here is M51 by the Deep Sky Collective. So, what could be seen in this image? So, the following information uh, was taken from our official text release uh, written by Tim and William. So, we have uh, shortened it a bit for the video, but be sure to check the full statement if you want to learn more. So, first, we have the tidal stream. Tidal streams are diffuse, elongated structures of stars and gas and dust, often extending beyond the boundaries of galaxies. And as M51A and M51B currently are currently engaged in violent gravitational interaction, ooh, that smaller galaxy M51B experiences tidal forces, and that disrupts the shape and provokes the formation of new stars. In order to get this entire stream, long integration times and dark skies were required. In the end, we had 68 hours and 57 minutes of luminance, which ensured that nice details were able to be seen and a high SNR view at the stream. So next was the HA uh, cliff formations. So the HA cliff formation is a remarkable but rarely imaged feature found within the Whirlpool galaxy. This H alpha emission uh, emanating from regions of intense star formation is a crucial indicator of the presence of young, massive stars that ionize the surrounding gas. Capturing this region proved to be an immense challenge. Uh, in the first stack, we had about 80 hours of data with relatively short exposures, ranging from 5 to 10 minutes, 
and we quickly realized that although the integration time was high, the cliffs were barely visible and could not properly be extracted in post-processing. Uh, after some discussions, we realized that the signal is so weak that the noise floor of the sensors overpowers it. Mm. In our last attempt, we shot nearly another 40 hours of long exposure subs, ranging from 900 to 1800 seconds, to get the signal to show up, which it indeed did in the end. So Ooh. very long exposure times were required here. And of course, the blue stellar stream. So similar to M82's blue stellar stream, M51 also has one that can be found on the north of the galaxy, but it's hardly ever noticed. Uh, so with nearly 20 hours of integration in the blue channel, we were able to get the stream to show up in great detail. Most likely it's because of a secondary result of a galactic, galactic low velocity shock caused by the interaction between M51A and M51B. So the resulting shock heats and compresses the gas to optimal star forming conditions, which is ooh, so cool, giving the stream its signature blue color. And lastly, many small galaxies and clusters of galaxies uh, can be seen in the background if you look closely. So how many can you count? Good luck. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yes, guys, uh, this was a really fun project to uh, collaborate on. I loved working on this with others. I would love to do this more often. So if you want to join this group and uh, collaborate on the next project, all you have to do is just message um, xsky underscore watcher uh, on Discord and send him your Instagram or Flickr, whatever you want, or Astrobin, so he can check out your images and see if you would be a good fit for the projects. And uh, yeah, just join us, it's very fun and we'll have more projects to come. So this was very fun. And also, this is a very, very fun comparison. This is the uh, group's image of M51, uh, so taken as of 2023. And here's an image of the very, very first picture of M51. Um, that's a, a great comparison. I love that. I love seeing those two together like this. It's crazy cool. I love comparison shots. So we might have some more pictures like this in the future. We'll see. So we'll see you guys next time and uh, Thanks, guys. guys.